This is the Uncanny Omar with the legendary Mark Bagley. Mark Bagley. Ask me my name. I'm confused. I don't know. Some people forget where they are. They've been here at the con all week, all day. How did your journey with comics begin, sir? <laughs> it was a dark and stormy night. Um, no, I just I fell in love with them when I was about, I don't know, eight or nine years old. And I got five brothers and a sister. None of them draw. None of them have read, ever, ever read comic books. And it just they just appealed to me. And uh, I just started drawing. And I was 27 years old and won a contest to get my first job at Marvel. And I uh, worked for about a year and a half doing comics and working at Lockheed doing technical illustration, living on about four hours sleep a night. And right about the time Lockheed started laying off, I was getting enough comic work to do this. And I've been doing it ever since. What was the issue that you drew that you won the contest for? Well, what it was was Marvel came out with uh, what was called the Marvel Trial Contest. Mm -hmm. and it was a book. It was about $13, full size like this. It was done in sections depending upon what you wanted to do. I mean, and um, it ended up with blank pages and a little bit of plot that you had to draw. Yeah. And so I've been trying to get in for years. And like I said, I was working at Lockheed doing technical illustration. And I was this close to stop trying to get in. I figured if, if it wasn't going to be, it wasn't going to be. And um, so the book came out, and I thought it was like a gimmick to take money from kids. So I wasn't going to buy it. And uh, You weren't going to buy your own published work? No, 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 no. I wasn't going to buy the, the contest book. To oh. do the contest book. Are you paying attention? No. I, I'm, 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 looking at your, I'm looking at your sketch. Well, don't do that. Anyway, uh, but the owner of the bookstore I was going to, Dr. Nose in Marietta, Georgia, mm -hmm. Cliff Biggers, gave it to me. He said, look, if you don't do this, you'll hate yourself. And uh, I won first place out of 12,000 and change um, entrance, which, you know, 11,912 year old, so it was a gimmick to take money from kids, but it got me a trip to New York and my first one-shot job in comics, and the moral of that story is, when if you want to do something and you get your shot, be ready for it, take it, and otherwise, I don't know what I'd be doing right now, because Lockheed was laying off, and I don't know, I had to go back to doing construction or something, so. You know, you are one of the hardest working comic book artists. And I remember years ago, I've always wanted to meet you at conventions. And there was a quote from you, I think in Wizard Magazine, when that was still coming out. Mm -hmm. And you were like, yeah, I don't do conventions often because, you know, I got to draw. And I'm too busy drawing. Yeah. And so it's good to see you out now. Well, conventions have changed over the years. If monetarily, they've become very, it's almost like you, you can't turn down the financial aspects of it. Um, I mean, who knew you'd be charging for autographs, you know, ever, and getting away with it. And I held off doing that for a long time until the dealers and the speculators got so annoying, I felt like I had to. Otherwise, I was just feeding their greed. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of work for artists. I mean, I have sit here doing this, and between this and signing, yeah, it work. I mean, I did construction. I don't know what work is. That's the other aspect of working really hard doing comics. I'm, bad day for me is like a really, really good day for most people at work because I love what I do and, uh, you know, I don't know what else I'd be doing. So even after all these years, mm -hmm. you still appreciate what you do for a living? Like After all these long decades, yes, I do. I, I never take it for granted, you know. Um, I love hearing that. Well, anybody who does is a fool. I mean, really. You know. Yeah, but we heard, you know, if you love what you do for a living, you never have to work a day in your life. Well, I, you know, I wouldn't go that far. After about the, you know, 10th hour of the day, I got into this business, you know, I was making less than minimum wage. If you factored in the amount of hours you work to produce the work, mm -hmm. it really was less than minimum wage. And I thought it would always be that way. I'd make a decent living, and my wife would always work, and I would love what I do for a living. And in the 90s, it turned into, you know, real money. And, you know, it's come yeah. back from that, but... It's still much better than I ever thought it'd be. And then there's the whole aspect of selling artwork, which has gone crazy. And, you know, this is, you know, 
It's getting to meet the fans. Oh yeah, that's that's an awesome. I love meeting the fans. They, they build you up, man. They're like, hey, like, you're the guy that. You know, like, along with I that. hope I don't need fans to build me up, but yeah. it is nice. I do appreciate them. Yeah, I think it's I think it's great. I, One of my favorite things is that you are still to this day. Did you ever think that you'd still be drawing Spider-Man after all these years? You know, I. No, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm amazed I'm still in this business after all these. There's, lot, there's lots more talented guys who aren't. Um, I, it's just, I you think know, and I some could love, argue with that. And I, well, they'd be wrong. Who's the expert? Me? You? What? Uh, but uh, I don't know. Editors, maybe? <laughs> editors don't know shit. What are you talking about, editors? Oh, my God. I do know you are quick, though. That's what she said. <laughs> Doom. I never know where these interviews are going to go. Middle and half mass miles. So, I mean, you're currently drawing as I'm interviewing you and still able to answer questions. That's that's talent. I can walk and chew gum. Yeah. This is true. I can do that. So, out of, okay, so you've been, you come back to Spider-Man from time to time. Yes. Uh, drawing monthly yeah, I was, issues. I was, you know, after Ultimate Spider-Man, I was off of really drawing Spider-Man for a year. I mean, like 10 years or so. And yeah. I really had kind of hankering to see what my amazing Spider-Man work would look like now as opposed to when I was on Amazing Spider-Man back then because I've changed as an artist and I've matured, I think. And I, and I look at my old Amazing stuff and personally, I, I feel like... I, anyway, people would disagree, but I think I sucked. You know, I never lived up to what I thought it should be because I, I was looking at Gil Kane and John Romita and John Romita Jr. and, you know, and... So coming back to it, I want to say, well, am I better now? And what, what, how would I be better? And, what, and just from the evolution of the artwork. And um, so that's been kind of fulfilling because people have really seemed to have accepted it and, and seemed to enjoy what I'm doing, um, which, you know, is important when you're doing a commercial art. So, so I think out of all the characters you've drawn in, in your career, would Spider-Man be the one that you've drawn the most? I, yeah, I've drawn more issues of Spider-Man, I think, than anything else. Um, you know, I don't know how many comics I've drawn. People keep track of that sort of thing. I don't even know how many Spider-Man comics I've drawn. I think you, you're in the Guinness Book of World Records for having the longest run on a comic book. Well, that's, like, that's kind of... Consecutive. Well, yeah, for a Marvel comic, for a, for a mainstream comic, I mean, that doesn't factor in, you know... Uh, Sergio Gonis and Gru. That doesn't yeah, factor yeah. in uh, um, what's his face. He does Serbius, you know. That, that, Dave Sim, yeah. Yeah, Dave Sim. Uh, for for a, you know for a mainstream Marvel comic, yeah. Uh, uh, Brian and I have the record for for a book, but granted, you know, we just barely broke Jack and Stan's yeah. record for Fantastic Four, and, and Jack was drawing three other comic books a month, you know. So uh, I take it with a grain of salt. It's cool. I mean, it's something definitely something to you know not take for granted but i it, it was it's not really something that i go that's my first thing i brag about you know who's your favorite character to draw well, now it's more upon more about who i'm working with and what the story is okay. um you know if it's a lousy spider-man story then it's not fun to draw you know yeah um so spider-man was always my favorite character growing up and i still think i you know i have an affinity for drawing him for, for some damn reason so you're good yeah. at it. Well, I, I have my moments when I'm okay. So, so what, what are you currently working on these days? I actually can't talk about that yet because I don't think they've announced it. Yeah, they haven't um, announced it yet. It's, so, uh, I just got done doing, you know, quite a few amazing Spider-Man issues in a row yeah. and a few, you know. Um, so, you guys will have to wait and see on that. Well, I'm excited regardless. You were at... DC for a while. I remember you did the whole Trinity series with uh, Kurt Busiek. Three years at DC. Yep. Um, went over there. I just felt like it was, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And I've been at Marvel for so long that, mm -hmm. and Marvel was great. They weren't treating me badly or anything, but it felt like it was time to go play in some other waters. And I, I had a hankering to do Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman, but and you got to do them all in well, one. Well, the only thing about Trinity was it turned into everybody but really yeah. quick. <laughs> I love Kurt Music, you know, but uh, and I don't think it was entirely his fault, but that story went off the rails really bad. Oh, man, I mean, that's... I got to draw a lot of cool stuff. I got to draw a lot of, you know, work my ass off. But uh, 
it wasn't exactly what I'd signed up for. You know? Yeah, that, I got to say that that's got to be disappointing for the artist. Like you look forward yeah, all these years to. You can't take it personally. It just happens sometimes. But that's a real pro, though. I mean, you stuck with it, and you're Skippy. It's a real pro. <laughs> you stuck with it, and you finished it out. I remember. Yeah, and yeah. It became more about like the other characters than yeah. Superman yeah. and yeah. Batman and Wonder Woman. Batman and Batman was a god. All of a sudden, I'm like, Batman's a god. How's that happen? You know. Um, anyway, let's yeah. get let's let's move past that a little. Uh, yeah, so back to Marvel, Ultimate Spider-Man. Do you ever think it was going to be as successful as it became? Because, you know, you're retelling the origin of Spider-Man, you're modernizing it. It's been done before, but... You never know how popular something's going to be. Um, I turned it down three times because, you know, I was at that moment in my career, I was a little burned out on Spider-Man, and um, John Byrne had just done his yeah. year one or whatever he chapter did one. chapter one whatever and it it had gone over like a fart in church and uh yep so i turned it down like three times and bill jemis bless him um really wanted me because i i didn't even know this or remember this but he'd been the editor on a trading card series i'd done years before mm -hmm. and he was he's a really big fan so um they kind of presented to me like you know you're always kind of looking for extra work cause you can do more than one book a month but you don't take this you might not be getting any extra work so i went all right fine i'll fucking do it and uh it was pitched to me as a six issue mini series and uh i was gonna leave after six then that first issue came out and i was working on issue five i think mm -hmm. but the first issue came out and damn it looked good it was beautiful inking the coloring was great the yeah. paper was awesome and the fans really seemed to like it and cliff the same guy who gave me the, the trial book said mm -hmm. dude and I had left the book. I had officially told him I was off. Yeah. And like the day before, two days before, and I called the office back to Macchio, Ralph Macchio, and said, hey, it's not too late. Can I stay on the book? And he's like, thank Christ. Bill Jemis thought we, thought we fired you. He was really pissed. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. So, and the rest is history. Dude, the rest is history. You guys put that book, that book was selling like crazy, and... Yeah, I, like on the ch on my channel, I do collected editions, and one of the most requested books was uh, Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume One reprint with a Volume Two, and that's exactly what the fans got. It's just it's just a really good read. Brian, I think, was top of his game in that book, and you know, it was just it's just a really good read, and uh, you can't have more than that. I've had more people tell me that that book got them into comics. God, God help them, you know. Um, because it was just so approachable. It was it was a standalone. You didn't have to know a whole shitload of continuity, and you have to deal yeah. with crossovers and all that other nonsense. And uh, that was a real relief too, because I I'd gotten really sick of that working on Amazing Spider-Man. Because at the time it was Amazing Web and Spectacular and yeah. whatever, and they were all interconnected and it was all rotating storylines. And I got really I was over that. So. Well, I know. It was a joy to have you back on a Spider-Man book monthly, and it was your art every month that, you know, drew a lot of us back. I look, like, I remember as a kid having the hardest time trying to find the first appearance of Carnage was uh, 360 or 361. 61. Yeah, 361. Because, like, I, I would know that. Yeah. I had no idea that I was there with everybody else that was trying to pick up the first appearance of Carnage, which blew up like crazy, like... So I've always wanted to ask you, this is my personal question, it's like, who, did you, who do you like drawing more, Venom or Carnage? Who's more fun to draw? <laughs> I don't really like drawing either one of them that much. Really? They're, okay. Each, they're just not that interesting. Um, Venom, you can do a bit more with the saliva and the tongue and all that stuff. I've gotten better about it because um, I started inking my own stuff for, like, uh, covers and things. Mm -hmm. and, and I've developed a few more detail techniques that I put into Carnage when it comes to textures and that sort of thing and it makes it more interesting to draw but you know it's I, I was offered a Carnage series years ago and turned it down because it's he's just such a dark and unpleasant character that you know yeah if I'd have known I've been drawing him 30 years later I'd have made him easier to draw but uh you know you, you never know like I said so who so who's your favorite villain to draw then who do you have fun oh. with Oh, yeah, fun. Villains are fun to draw. It, mm -hmm. not, I don't know if I have a favorite or not. I mean, I love drawing a rhino or a kingpin or... I don't know. Any villain can be really fun to draw. You know, hell, even Galactus can be fun to draw, though he's a pain in the ass, you know, with the helmet and all that. 
because he's so big or de so detailed. Yeah, you know, the huge helmet and the fins and the thing, and the, you know, you just want to slap Jack Kirby right across the head. Like, what are you thinking? I don't think I've ever heard a creator say that. Oh, yeah. Nice. We all think it, though. <laughs> I'm just honest enough to say it. That, I like that. Um, well, I'm going to let you draw, and I'm going to just thank you for giving us the time to talk to you for a little bit. You are more than welcome. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Let's do that. Oh, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you.